Arbor guitars. Some people swear by them, some people have never heard of them. Today I'll be rebuilding a pair of these awesome 80s gems. Plus, I'll be announcing the winner of my monthly guitar raffle for the 1994 Jackson Rhodes concept I recently rebuilt. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. This is Trash to Thrash. For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. This season, I'll be rebuilding guitars sent in by fans of the show. I'll be rebuilding 14 guitars over 14 weeks, each with a unique and interesting backstory. I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to make these things into the guitars of their dreams. This is Trash to Thrash. Hi everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and today we're going to be working on a pair of Arbor Piranha Flying Vs, aka Randy Rhodes Jackson Concord clones. I'd never heard of Arbor before, but within two weeks, two different people contacted me to have me rebuild their old Arbor Flying Vs. The first guitar here is Alex's Arbor. Alex's dad bought this guitar from a pawn shop in 1983 when Alex was 13 years old. The guitar was in like new condition, so we're guessing this is a 1982 to 83 model. Alex is a huge Randy Rhodes fan, so this was his dream guitar. After almost 40 years, the guitar still has its original paint, and Alex wants to give this guitar some new life, so he sent it to me. But we had one major problem. The headstock broke in transit. When I got the box, I could actually feel the guitar moving around inside, and anytime you ship a guitar, the guitar should be packed tightly in the center of the box. It shouldn't be up against the edge of the box. So as it's shipping, it's almost like it's free floating within a bunch of packing material. But this one, I could feel it banging around against the sides of the box. And right away, it, I, I knew something could be wrong. I opened it up and unfortunately, the headstock was snapped off the guitar. When I opened the box, this is what I found. The guitar was wrapped poorly with some bubble wrap. And then it was just placed in the box with no padding around it. Alex had brought his guitar into one of the big shipping companies and had them pack it up for him. I recommend packing it up yourself, and I'm not going to name the company that did this, but if you must bring it somewhere, like FedEx, or UPS, or the post office, but mainly FedEx, then you should stand there and watch them pack it and make sure it's done right. It was actually even packed upside down with all the labels and everything readable so that the guitar was packed in there upside down. Obviously a guitar should always be upright when it's put into a box. And yeah, I opened it up and there was shards of wood and chipped paint and all kinds of stuff all over the place. So we're gonna dowel it, epoxy it, and get this thing better than it's ever been. Man, it's really unfortunate. It broke my heart seeing the guitar snapped like this. I, I don't wanna see that. This here is another Arbor Piranha Flying V that was sent into the Guitar Guts shop for a new paint job. This one belongs to Jonathan. He bought this guitar in 1982 brand new. He's played it in bands for years and attempted a restoration on it, but decided it would be better off having us do it. So he sent it in. He wants it painted matte army green, and he wants a hole added for a kill switch. If you know Arbor Piranha Flying Vs, then you know this headstock is slightly modified. The original version looked like this. Strangely enough, this guitar came in with a little bit of shipping damage as well. One of the corners of the V broke off. It's the only two guitars I've ever had come in that were damaged in shipping. This one isn't too bad though, I can just glue it right back on. The history of Arbor Guitars isn't clear. It wasn't documented well, there's not really much you could find online about it, but from what I have found, it says the company was started in Japan in 1984 by a former Ibanez president and a former Yamaha manager. I don't really know if that's 100% true because I know a few people who have 1982 and 1983 model Arbor Guitars though. Arbor made a lot of different style of guitars and you can still find many of them on eBay and Reverb today. Apparently a factory was set up in Hamamatsu, Japan where they built guitars through 1986. The quality of these guitars varied drastically though. Some of them were made from high quality wood while others were made from plywood and even some from scrap wood. Some people say they were excellent quality guitars and some people say they were beginner level guitars but I think it all comes down to which specific model you get your hands on. From what I read, there may or may not have even been some lawsuits thrown at Arbor at some point, so that's probably why they stopped making the Les Pauls and the Concords. Legend has it, when Fender acquired Music Corp, they ended Arbor Guitars. But since then, they've sold off that division. So who knows, we may end up seeing somebody bring Arbor back one day. Alright, time to start working on this Arbor here that Alex sent in. There's a full plan in place for this guitar, including tons of mods and upgrades. But we'll go over the whole plan for this guitar next week. This week, the goal for this guitar is just to fix the headstock and get it back to normal. 
and then next week we'll start upgrading it. So as always, I handed this guitar off to Ryan, and he started sanding it. Then I did some basic Bondo repairs and sanded those level. Sometimes I like to spray a coat of paint on so I could see how many defects are in the body. Since this is a light colored guitar, I'll spray it black and then I'll start sanding it. Then I'll be able to see any low spots and get this thing really flat. I would normally do this spraying in the booth, but I have the other arbor in there right now. And also, this is just a scratch coat of paint. I'm going to be sanding it all down again. To repair the headstock, I took some Elmer's Industrial Wood Glue and I brush it onto every open pore of wood that I can find that's going to make contact between the head and the neck. I really slathered it on. Then I push the headstock on, and I use some small cards to remove the excess glue. The way it broke, the pieces went together real tight. They kind of locked back into place, so I'm confident that with the dowels installed, this is going to definitely hold. Now I'll put this electrical tape around it, and I use electrical tape because it doesn't really stick to the glue, and it also stretches, so you can really pull it tight, and it's not going to loosen up. And just to be smart, I'm going to put a couple clamps on there. I'm going to leave this to dry for a few days at least. The headstock dried up great, and now I'm going to do the first round of Bondo on it. One thing that's really weird about this guitar is I've never seen another Arbor Piranha that has this headstock. I've seen other Arbor models like the Explorer that have this headstock on it, and I've seen at least 20 other Piranhas by now that none of them have this same headstock. So it makes me wonder, could this headstock have been changed at some point, or could it have previously been broken and repaired? Or was there something weird going on at Arbor's factory? Because they were using scrap wood sometimes to make bodies, maybe they just threw this neck on this guitar, because that's all they had around. I mean, it is possible, they were doing some weird things in that shop, like using scrap wood to make bodies sometimes, so... I don't know, if you guys have any information on this, let me know down in the comments. If you've ever seen another Piranha that has this headstock on it, let me know. The next part of this is I'm gonna add some metal dowels to the headstock. So I'm gonna drill two times this direction through the headstock, and then I'll drill down two times this direction through the headstock. Then I cut this steel dowel down to length, and ran it through all four holes and then traced it on the other side. Then I glued the dowels into place. Pretty simple, really. Then I mixed up some Bondo, filled in all the cracks, and while I was there I filled in the extra hardware holes for the tuner, since I'll be replacing the tuners and they're not going to be using the same screw holes and patterns as the original ones did. I'll do some more hand sanding to get the shape right on the back of the neck where it transitions to the headstock, but now its head has been reattached. When Alex heard about the headstock break, he was heartbroken, and he almost wanted to cancel the whole project. At one point he told me, pack the guitar up, let's send it back, and I talked him into keeping it here. I told him I'd fix the headstock for free and let's get this thing rocking and rolling. There's not a lot of shops that wanted to take on this job, he said. I told him, you know, it's already here. Let's get this thing fixed. Let's get it upgraded and sent it back to you once and for all. So we're gonna move forward with the repair. But take this as a lesson to all of you. If you ever ship a guitar, make sure that it's shipped properly. Wrap the guitar in a couple layers of bubble wrap. Put some layers down below it in the box set it into the box, make sure the box is appropriately sized. You don't want the box to be right up against the guitar. You want the guitar to have two inches or so around it in each direction, at least two inches, so that it can be floating, semi-floating within packing, you know, not moving around, but so that if something hits the box, it's gonna hit the padding inside because a lot of times boxes come, there's dents, there's holes in the boxes where other, you know, these, these shipping guys, they just throw the boxes. You gotta take that into consideration. They don't care about these instruments as much as we do. And be sure to always purchase insurance when you ship a guitar. It's usually only about 10 bucks and it's definitely worth it. Unfortunately, this one came in with some serious damage, but we're gonna make it perfect. After the refinish, you're never gonna be able to know that this neck was ever broken. Hey everybody, this episode of Trash to Thrash is sponsored by Lundgren Guitar Pickups. I've been using Lundgren pickups for years. Johan and his team over in Sweden are making amazing quality stuff. They have great customer service. And you don't have to take my word for it. Ibanez, Strandberg, they're using them in their guitars now. Mashuga, Ghost, Dr. Doom. I mean, me, I use them in almost all the EVH guitars that I build. They have a pickup called the Heaven 77 that is dead on to Eddie's original tone. Check it out. Sounds awesome, right? 
They have a whole line of vintage, modern, extended range pickups, all kinds of stuff. So go check out Lundgren Pickups. Their link is down in the description below. And also I'm going to be hosting a giveaway for their pickups. So um, over the next couple weeks, make sure to keep watching the show for a chance to win. All right, we're going to switch over and leave the rest of Alex's guitar for next week. It's time to start working on John's Arbor Piranha. I handed this guitar off to Ryan and he started sanding it down. This guitar actually took a long time to sand down because it had layers and layers of thick paint on it and 40 years worth of chips and dents. Then he handed it back to me and I repaired the body and got it prepped for paint. This guitar needed a lot of work so I did some body repair, I painted it, and then I found a few more things I didn't like on it. So I did a little more body repair and painted it again. Then I brought it over to the drill press to add a hole for a kill switch. This guitar is made out of really soft wood, so it's real susceptible to damage, chips, and things like that. After painting it three times, it's starting to look really good. So I'm going to remove the tape that's covering the fretboard, because when I apply the matte clear coat over this, I want to have a nice seamless edge on the side, because there's actually a binding on the neck, and I want the binding and the paint to be level. If I were to just put the clear coat over the paint alone and leave the binding tape, you feel this lower area where the binding is because I built up all this paint and clear and then the binding didn't have the clear. But I still will be taping off the top of the fretboard because I don't want to spray the top of the fretboard and the frets with clear. And back into the paint booth we go for some matte clear. And I gotta say, this thing turned out really good. This color fits this guitar really well. It's completely different than what it came with and the matte finish just really fits the flat body. The headstock looks super sleek. And of course the matte finish on the back of the neck has a great feel to it. Sometimes when I do guitars for people, I'll rebuild the whole guitar. Sometimes I just paint them. And that's what this was. John's going to reassemble it and get it wired up. And I had to wait a little while to see it before it was finished. But I can show you right now because John sent me this video of the guitar reassembled. It looks totally killer. It's got black tuners on it. He's got a chrome locking nut, a set of Seymour Duncan pickups with a dime bucker in the bridge, the stock AccuTune bridge, black knobs, and a black Iron Age kill switch with a green LED. And now to tell us about the guitar, John. First guitar I ever bought was a 1982-ish Armor V. It was the Randy Rhodes version. I've kept it for 40 years. Amazing guitar. This is the guitar now after it's been redone by Mark Murray from Trash to Thrash. Amazing job he did bringing this 40 year guitar to new life. Even though I was 18 playing the guitar, sort of looked like then. When I was 50 playing it to now. Man, great job, Jonathan. Thanks for sending the guitar in. It turned out really cool, and I'm not usually a fan of mixing black and chrome hardware or mixing hardware colors, but hey, it worked here. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. Do you want your guitar modified by me, or would you want me to build you a custom guitar and have it featured on the show? If so, send me an email to mark at guitarguts.com. I also have that listed down in the description below. I'd be more than happy to go over some custom guitar options with you. If you have a guitar you want modified, or you don't have the guitar yet, Either is totally fine. I can help you hunt for the right guitar to build up the guitar of your dreams. If you have a guitar you want me to modify, send me some pictures of it and a description of what it is and what you'd like done to it, some ideas. If you don't really know, that's totally fine. I'll help you know brainstorm with you and we'll come up with a game plan for making you a totally awesome, custom, killer axe. All right, guys, so what'd you think of the episode? Let me know down in the comments what you thought of these Arbor guitars. If you have any other information about Arbor, leave that down below too. John's guitar looks awesome, reassembled. Great job, John, and thanks for sending that video in. Let me know what you guys thought of John's guitar down below, and be sure to tune in next week because I'm going to be finishing Alex's Flying V, and that one is insane. That thing is just getting completely overhauled. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, you can always find the show directly at guitarguts.tv. Tell your friends about it and help me spread the word. I really appreciate it when you guys do that, and I see it on your guys' stories and all that, so keep that up. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next week. Rock on, my friends. All right guys, it's the 15th of the month and it's time for another one of my guitar raffles. If you don't know, I raffle off a guitar every month. If you want to be part of one of my guitar raffles, go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon page. It's $10 a month and you're automatically entered every month to win one of these guitars. Last month I gave away the Ibanez Pro Line V, the Crackle one, 
This month I'm giving away a 1994 Jackson Rhodes that I fully customized. It's got EMG 5766 pickups and black chrome, matching Goto tuners. It's got all the upgrades, clear pick guard, custom paint. It's a wicked guitar. Purple Tessie kill switch on the thing, so it's an awesome guitar. Um, if you want to win one of these, go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon page, but also there's no purchase necessary ways to enter as well. What I do for those is I run mini contests on my Instagram page, follow me, at Guitar Guts. And this month I had two winners. Um, I said leave a comment below, whoever gets the most comments on this post is going to be entered into the raffle. And I also said whoever tags the most people is going to be entered into the raffle. So we had some people coming on tagging eight people, and then someone came on nine, and then someone came on tag ten. The winner tagged 11 people, so it's Ryan's Riff Rats, he won that one, and Matt Prosser won the most likes on a single comment on that post. So they're gonna be thrown into the raffle, and we have um, all the people in my Patreon I downloaded into an Excel file, and I have a random number generator. So I'm gonna click the random number generator, it's gonna give me a number, and I'm just gonna go right down the line. It numbers everybody based on order of signing up, so it's very random, and I'm gonna be doing a couple um, runner-ups first, so I'm gonna give away a Guitar Guts Kill Switch from Iron Age Accessories. It's a Kill Switch that has my logo on it, and then we also have a limited edition Guitar Guts pick that Iron Age also made. So someone's gonna win the pick, someone's gonna win the Kill Switch, and then we're gonna raffle the guitar to the third person we draw. So let's come over to the computer. I got the random number generator here, and let's go ahead and pull the first name. So we got number 21, and that is Ethan Russell. Ethan Russell, you won the Guitar Guts pick. So congratulations to you. I'll be in contact with you, Ethan. This next name we're gonna be pulling will be for the kill switch. So let's pull the next name. Number 31, David Rotan. So we got the two runner-ups right there. We got David and we got Ethan, and um, Man, this is the big one, the guitar. These guitars are guitars I spent a lot of time rebuilding and coming up with these cool concepts for, and I originally was gonna sell them, but I decided, you know, let's find a different way to do this. Um, give something back to the people, let people help support the channel a little bit. You know, it's only $10 a month, but right now there's only 70-something uh, people in the Patreon, so you have a one in 70 chance over a year, that's, think about that, you know, you have 12 shots a year, so pretty incredible. Okay, for the guitar, number 11. Who is number 11? We got Austin Kritzer. You won the guitar, man. I'll be in contact with you, Austin, so check your email. Um, I'll see if I can get him on a video, maybe on next week's tra Trash to Thrash, and talk to him about winning the guitar, or when he gets the guitar, maybe we'll do a video with him then, but man, congratulations to our three winners. Um, I'll be contacting you all through email, and to everybody else, go sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon page. Like I said, it's only 10 bucks a month. Or go to my Guitar Guts Instagram page, and you can find every month I have no purchase necessary ways to get into the raffles too. So Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys right back here next week. Rock on, my friends.